Hello, my name is Doug Kay, and I'm here with another short video for the Arcanum. This time, I want to take a look at an optional way of processing images in Lightroom that you might think need to be processed as HDR using external software. But in fact, there are ways we can process a, an image like this using only Lightroom, never going to Photoshop, never going to a third-party plugin such as Photomatix Pro or Nix uh, HDR Effects Pro. Take a look at this image. It's a scene of the Berkeley Marina that was shot by one of my apprentices named Hadi. And when he went to shoot this scene, he discovered that there was a great dynamic range here. It was from very bright things to very dark things. And when he took his original exposure, he said, gee, the sky looks blown out, can't see any detail there. The shadows look very dark, I can't see any detail there. So he decided to shoot bracketed exposures. This is his normal exposure. Here we see his two stops underexposed in order to capture the detail in the sky. And here is his two stops overexposed image in order to capture detail in the rocks in the foreground. So if we go back to the first exposure here, you can see once again that the sky is, looks blown out, lacking in detail. The rocks in the foreground are in shadow, also lacking in detail. So sort of a reasonable assumption that Adi should go and do an underexposed shot to get the sky, an overexposed shot to get the foreground and then combine them using one of the applications that are out there. The problem is that this is the image that Hadi came up with when he did this. This is out of Nix HDRFX Pro. There are a number of problems with it. The most obvious that you can see here on the video are these halos. If you look at the area around these masts, let me zoom in here a little bit, uh, and you can see that there's quite a bit of haloing, and that is this white area that is... Uh, surrounding the masts. It's like a little cloud, a little halo around each one of these masts, maybe particularly strong on this one here. It looks more objectionable, I guess, in the wider angle than when I zoom in. This is an artifact of some of the HDR software because what those applications are trying to do uh, is take an image that has a very wide dynamic range, more than we can put into an image at one time, and compress it into an image where we can see the entire dynamic range at one time. Now, normally when you do that, you'd get a very low contrast image. You'd reduce the contrast so that you could get the lightest and darkest things into the same range. The problem is that's a very flat and ugly image. So the software goes back in and tries to increase localized contrast. It looks at areas such as where these masts meet the sky, and they try and bump up the contrast by making the lighter parts lighter, the darker parts darker. So there's actually uh, some halo in the dark parts of the mast too. We just don't see that as much. It's not as objectionable as the light part of the halo. So let's go into the develop module here in Lightroom and look at Hadi's original, the one that was neither over nor underexposed. And let's take a look by moving the exposure slider down. If we bring it down, oh, a couple of stops, we can see that there is a great deal of detail in the sky. And if we bring it up two stops or so, we can see that there's a great deal of detail in the foreground. In fact, this image has all the information that Hadi needs for his final image. He doesn't really need the under and overexposed bracketed images. And that's because our modern cameras these days can capture phenomenal dynamic range as long as you're shooting in RAW. Let's reset that. What we're going to do, therefore, is we're just going to work with this image. We know it's all in there, but we want to be able to bring out the highlights and the shadows without making an entirely flat image. So here's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is maybe bring up the exposure just a little bit, something like that. We're going to take our highlights all the way down. And we're going to take our shadows all the way up. Okay? And we're going to take our white level, oh, just down a little bit here. And we're going to take our black level up a bit, maybe up to 40 or so. The no exact numbers here don't matter. You just have to experiment to get used to these this technique so you know what you're doing. And we're going to add a little vibrance in here too. Okay. Now, take a look what we've got here. We've got a very... We, we've managed to bring back in the detail in the sky and we've brought back in the detail in the shadows in the rocks. But we have a very flat, low contrast image. It doesn't look particularly good. If we go back, for example, and compare it to um, what Hadi was working with, Hadi's version, let's go take a look. 
Here is Hottie's version coming out of HDRFX Pro. And here's what we've got with. As you can see, this version is, as I say, low contrast, flat, certainly lacking in energy. What we're going to do, though, is we've managed to capture everything here. We're still in a raw format. We're still in a very high dynamic range format in that we have available to us all the information from the shadows uh, and the highlights. So now that I have all the information recovered, I'm going to export this to a low dynamic range file. Uh, I'm not going to be able to further recover any more highlights or more shadows, but that's okay. I've captured everything I need in this very low contrast image. So I'm going to go to File, Export, I happen to have a preset for this, and I'm going to export this in full resolution. But most importantly, I'm going to export this as a TIFF image, not a JPEG, because I don't want to lose anything in compression. So I'm going to export that image. And once that export is done, I'm going to come back into Lightroom. I'm going to find it in my Finder. I'm just going to drag it into the library, and that's going to start up an import operation. And I'm going to import that image. And now let's open up that TIFF image in the develop module. Okay, now we have, as I said, just this low contrast image, but it has all the information we want. So now let's process this a second time in Lightroom, uh, as though this were our starting point. Well, what do we want to do here? The first thing we want to do is bump up the contrast, because we want more contrast in this image, that's for sure. Um, we're going to take the highlights down again, uh, all the way here. We're going to pump up our whites a little bit. Bring our blacks down a little. Again, the exact numbers here don't matter. The whole concept here is that you made a composite image, recovering all your information, saved as a, as a TIFF, and then brought it back into the develop module again. And let's go in and add a little more clarity. What I'm trying to do here is emulate the overall look that Hadi got from HDRFX Pro, but without the artifacts. And finally, I'm just going to warm it up a little. I think it's a, a little bit on the cool side. So we're going to just bring this up, make it a little bit warmer. Season to taste, I guess you'd say. And there we have it. Now, let's take a look comparing this to what Hadi did. On the left is Hadi's original version as it came out of Nix HDRFX Pro. On the right is the one that I processed entirely in Lightroom using this double processing technique. I think you can see they're fairly close to one another. There's a lot more that you could do if you really wanted the exact same look. You could process this further and do all sorts of things. My point of all of this, of course, is that not only can you eliminate some of the artifacts by using a technique like this, but also that more often than not, that single exposure, because it's shot in RAW and captures an incredible dynamic range, can actually be used instead of using the bracketed shots. And what we've seen is that if you can't get enough by using Lightroom, because the sliders simply don't go far enough, start by making an image that has all the dynamic range you need, but is a very low contrast image, export it as a TIFF file, and then bring it back into Lightroom and run it through the develop module again to boost the contrast and the other things that you want to do to the image. I hope you find this helpful. Uh, it's a great way to process images in high dynamic range without using external HDR software. Again, this is Doug Kay for the Arcanum, and thanks for watching.